Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 2, Episode 1, Thoughts. This episode is called Shadows. Another episode I love. Uh, spoilers for the, for the MCU leading up to and including this episode. No spoilers for anything MCU that came out after this episode first premiered. So the top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the SAG After Strikers, and then there's some links to videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. So let's dive in. So yeah, we open in 1945 with Hydra. Very cool to see Agent Carter leading the Howling Commandos. And they even brought back several of the the actors. Um, Neil Mc, McDonough, Kenneth Choi, I feel like there was more... I think there was at least one more. Uh, I'm afraid I forget his character name. It's difficult to make out from... if it's a... Uh, because everyone has a important sounding... Uh, yeah, anyway. And... Yeah, and now we see that Sky is a full-on agent, you know, with, with training, and the, the way she carries herself is very different. And very cool to see Lucy Lawless. Uh, I guess based on the ending of this episode, this is the last we're going to see of her, which is too bad. I like her character. I am quite a fan of her as an actress. And we know she's good for this sort of, like, you know, okay, so this is not as, like, corny and, and ridiculous as something like Xena, but she's good in these shows. She's good at this sort of developing her character over the course of many episodes kind of thing. And I don't know. I I know it would be. I I don't know how they would bring her back. She seems one hundred percent dead at the end of this episode. But it would be really cool if they were able to. Yeah, I like the thing with you know you brought more than two guards. What do you mean? I only brought two guards. I was like, oh. And yeah, we learned that Colson, Director Colson, Director AC is very busy. Does not see very many people, and this was the very first 084, and Carl Cree Creel is able to take the form of the diamond that was his, you know, what, what did they say, a, a gift, because they, they knew that he would succeed this mission, and... Yeah, we learn, you know, Fitzsimmons are very different now. Uh, you know, basically, Fitz has ADHD. He, he can't quite focus. And... Yeah, legitimately very cool it's that it turns out, that, you know, oh, it's, it's not metal, it's flesh. You know, it's Creel flesh that came off from the which which yeah you know if you want to stop bullets from from entering your body if you're able to you know th this is actually what nine out of ten doctors prescribe as as the treatment is you you turn your flesh into metal because yeah it's no seriously very clever writing and let's see yeah, and, and Trip is jealous that Koenig has shown more proof of being a triplet than he himself has, despite his name. And yeah, so Sky talks to Ward, which he, he's been asking for for a long time, and he admits that he was suicidal for a while, and Sky just says, well, too bad it failed. Which, yeah, she, she absolutely hates him. And I do, you know, th that is something, you know, there's, there's a number of, of women who the, the one thing they can't forgive a guy for is lying, which, you know, makes a lot of sense. And, yeah, you, you know, you see it here, you see it in The Departed, there's various other pieces of media where... The, the one thing 
a female character cannot forgive is, is lying. And Carl makes Groot jealous. And yeah, I, I do appreciate Ward does give some useful information. And just, you know, Sky leaves just before he can tell her, I, you know, I have something important to tell you about your father. Dun, dun, dun. And Coulson says, you know, we, we kept Ward here because everyone loves working with him and the audience loves watching him. I mean, because he might have information. That's, that's it. And very, very cool with the, with Talbot, you know, Triplet does the thing where, you know, he bumps into a character and, you know, slips something important into one of their pockets. Let's see. And, yeah, very cool when Carl fights Melinda May with the, you know, swinging the thing and throwing it at her, just, yeah. And, yeah, Talbot arguing with, with Coulson. I like the thing that he's, he says it's, you know, he refers to the, the place as the honeycomb kill room, which, yeah, I'm glad somebody pointed out, you know, I, I get it, you know. The, the, it's a, it's a cool shape, you know, but yeah, it's, it's kind of, it is a goofy concept. And yeah, you know, Colson provokes Talbot so he'll grip the, the arm rest, which gives them the, the fingerprints, very clever. And he absolutely is the kind of, like, based on what we what we've seen of, of Glenn Talbot so far, he absolutely is the kind of person who would let himself get baited into that. You know, because if, if he stops and thinks, like, wait, just ignore what he's saying. Ignore what he's saying. He's trying to get, you know, a reaction out of me. And I'm, and if I give it to him, you know, he, he can use that. I gotta say, uh, Ian DeCastecker as Fitz does really, really great acting you know, and I, it's an interesting thing to do with the character. I don't know how I feel about it yet. I, I'll wait and see what exactly they do down the line with the character. But yeah, he definitely, he completely nails it. Like the, the, you know, he really, he does come across as completely different and it is the sort of thing that can really change you. You know, he, he almost died. He's he's recovering from that still. I, in general, I felt like they did a good job in this episode of saying, you know, yeah, it's been, you know, I know I watched it the day after I watched the season one finale, but the the airing schedule, it's been months since, you know, and in universe, it's been months. And so we're told, you know, May has been training Sky. You can see that in, you know, Ward could could see that right away in how she she stands, how she carries herself. And yeah, um, Creel Creel wanted to get he wanted to learn the location, but him getting captured is actually even more useful for him. And I appreciate like because it. You know, if you if you watch the scene carefully, it does look like he's he's able to stop the the you know he gets shot with these things that seem to stop him. But if you look carefully, there's actually it looks like he could like you you can kind of see the gears turning the the hamster wheel run you know spinning. Like wait a second, hypothetically, I could just move. But if I stop moving now, they're going to think that they subdued me. I just have to play possum for a while. Then they put me in the place that I'm looking to, to get into. Let's see. And, you know, they, they drop off Talbot and then he comes to and calls a number. And it's the, you know, it's, it's Koenig who, who's on the other end, which is... Very clever. 
and they can basically just leave Talbot there, you know, eventually he's going to be like, ah, they intercepted the call, didn't they? Mm, okay. You know, and, and do something else, but, you know, obviously they don't actually want to hurt him. That would, you know, on, on the one hand, they do consider, you know, he, they think of him as hypothetically an ally, but just misguided. And on the other, they do not want to bring that down, that kind of heat on them. And I do quite like the thing with, you know, one of the guards guarding Creel. You know, it's like, oh, it was like a magic trick. And then he turns around, looks, and seemingly Creel is gone. And he makes the, the crucial mistake of running into a room that he thinks is empty. And, yeah, you know, very nice reveal shot that shows, you know, oh, he's glass. So, yeah, like, from the correct angle, you can see that he's standing there. But from outside, looking in, you can see right through him because he's such an obvious liar, just as you can see through the rest of the glass cell. And I quite like Coulson pretending to be Talbot, and they have like a voice alteration thing, which, you know, they have those today. I, I don't know if they did in, let's see, this episode's from 2014? You know, but I, you know, spy agencies might have, and you know, it's the MCU. They have tech that we don't. And Creel pose, you know, makes himself look like a wall to get in there. And Izzy, Lucy Lawless's character, literally can't let go of the 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 084. Do not abort. Okay, then. And, yeah, she demands... Um, I'm struggling with the names of the new characters. Hunter, I think his name was, uh, cut off the arm. And, yeah, it turns out, you know, the thing that the mission was... You know, they, they were there for a Quinjet, and they managed to get one. And, you know, we have the devastating line, since Simmons left, so... You know, and and the camera pans around, and yeah, you know, he was in the earlier scene. He was also he also thought that Simmons was there, and you know, when you think back to that scene, yeah, in, you know, for the other characters standing there, just like waiting, you know, they they saw Fitz talking to himself as if Simmons was there, you know, so. Yeah, uh, and I'm always, you know, I like when, you know, I, I don't love the idea of, like, you know, this mental health diagnosis thing being treated as, like, a plot twist, but I do appreciate that it makes us see it before we're told that it's not there so that we, you know, empathize more with him. Let's see. Yeah, and... Creel manages to stop the car and grab the 084, and the episode ends. Very cool way to start the season. Um, you know, sets up the new status quo with all the... Yeah. You know, it's still a very bad situation for S.H.I.E.L.D., but at least Coulson has a little bit more to work with now. Uh, we meet Hunter, Mac... I guess I should say Izzy, though it seems like she might not stick around. Um, and Idaho, and it's, yeah, the the this thing of you know they have to work with some people who don't really care about the cause. Like Hunter does not care about the cause, and yeah, and at the very end, you know, the post credit scene reveals Doctor Whitehall. So. Yeah, he does not look like he has aged a day since 1945, so I, I guess it's possible that it's, like, descendant or something, but they specifically have the line, you know, the, the, some, something like, I know you've been waiting for a long time, and he says you have no idea, so, something like that. So I get the sense that it's, that somehow he just hasn't aged in all this time. 
So some IMDb trivia. Let's see. Oh, the the yeah. So Carl Crusher Creel is the absorbing man. And yeah, this is the first time we see him in live action media, although there's a similar ability in Hulk 2003. Oh, and Bowl and Chain is his weapon of choice in the comics. Very cool. And... Right, so Lance Hunter is in the comics, but he's the leader of Strike, which is also an abbreviation like S.H.I.E.L.D., and it's a British intelligence agency similar to S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh, and Simon Cassian, Cassianides auditioned for the part of Lance Hunter, but was eventually cast as Hydra member Sunil Bakshi instead. Yeah, and she... Um, wait, did we see him at the start as well, or is he only at the end? Anyway, um, let's see... And... Oh, <laughs> costume designer Anne Foley revealed in the book Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 2 Declassified that the imaginary Simmons wears the same outfit she wore in from Season 1, the, the sixth episode. Oh, yeah, yeah, she totally does. Now that I now that I look at a picture from that episode, 100%, that's the same one. Normally, the character never wears the same outfit twice, so this outfit is a clue to her being a figment of Fitz's imagination. Let's see, and... Oh, after Agent Carter and the Howling Commandos take down the last Hydra site that they know of, one of the Commandos attempts to open a crate containing confiscated artifact. Agent Carter quickly closes it. Before it closes, however, there is a brief glimpse of a blue body. It is the body of a Kree, most likely the body of the guest host used to develop the GH-325 serum. See. Oh. Huh. Creel was off screen but featured in Daredevil, the the Netflix show, not just the comic. Um and Sierra Victor Niner is a reference to Dollhouse. Yeah. Um yeah. Really, really solid episode, and um, see. I think that is right. Yeah, I like the the relationship between Izzy and Hunter. The thing with you know, uh, you should. Focus, both focus on not saying anything overly stupid. Idaho says, yes, ma'am. Hunter says, I'm not making any promises. And... Let's see... Yeah, the... the... I think that might... Koenig's always mentioning other brothers. Every day, another brother. If he brings up one more brother, I don't know what I'm going to do. Right, I like when Coulson was, you know, imitating Talbot and went, Talbot, out! And Koenig is like, what are you, what, what is this? What are you doing, you know, with his, with his face, not words. And... I think that might be about what I have to say. Right, and the, yeah, when he, yeah, Colson, you know, Koenig is like, go bigger, go bigger, and Colson is, or I'll have you so deep in horse manure, son, you'll need a damn snorkel. Just, yeah. Right, and the thing with, you know, early on, Izzy says, you're selling us a needle in a haystack, and later she says, wow, I, it really was just, you know, 
needle in a haystack. And let's see. I like that Koenig is like having fun with the tech. You know, he says there's an inertial confinement laser buried down there, which is cool. And early in other part of the episode, he says, "So the guy was bulletproof, huh? That's sweet." And yeah, um, that is it for this one. So next episode, I should be able to cover tomorrow. And you know what they say: cut off one head, two more shall grow in its place. Then I guess we'll keep cutting them off. <laughs>